It is very good to be here and thank you for uh, the invitation. It is a very important national event and I'm glad to share with you my experience and the experience of Romanian organizations. As you can see, I just came up from the video to have this presentation. <laughs> so um, my presentation will focus, first of all, I will just introduce the organizations, uh, the organization I'm working for, and then I'll just go brief uh, briefly in a history of harm reduction in Romania from its beginning until the present and I will focus on the situation that we're facing today which is uh, similar to Greece but unfortunately we did not have the intelligence to to do the right things yet I'm very optimistic that we will be able to do this in the future um, the Romanian harm reduction uh, network is a network formed by uh, 12 organizations and 12 individual members up to now uh, gathering harm reduction professionals, harm reduction service providers, mainly uh, needle exchange programs or opiate substitution treatment centers, uh, NGOs and private uh, sector. We also uh, have uh, in, in the network uh, the social department of uh, the Bucharest City Hall. Um, the network was first um, created uh, in 2002 uh, at that time, uh, as you'll see, there were a few uh, harm reduction organizations in the, in the country and the goal was to, sh to allow uh, organizations to share experience and to increase their quality of service. In 2006, the network was um, officially registered and it became an association, uh, not just a project as it was before. Um, but first, yeah, okay. So what do we stand for? We promote harm reduction services and facilitate the implementation of effective policies on programs targeting people who use drugs and other vulnerable groups. By raising stakeholder awareness with regards to human rights in relation to drug-related issues, by promoting effective drug policies based in human rights and public health principles, uh, by organizing public campaigns to fight stigma and discrimination, and to advocate for innovative harm reduction services such as safe consumption rooms. Uh, we are, uh, we're doing some research. These are two, uh, two research reports we did. One is focusing on the access to, uh, uh, to clean uh, needles and uh, substitution treatment in uh, Bucharest, in pharmacies, and it was done in 2010. The other one is documenting uh, the increase in use in uh, new novel psychoactive substances, mainly in uh, young people and adolescents. Both of them were done uh, with UNICEF support. And uh, more recent studies uh, went on uh, analyzing the national drug policy and its costs, and also uh, the consequences of pretrial detention over the lives of people who use drugs, what impact on their uh, social re re reintegration pro chances and uh, their criminal rec record as well. We're doing training. Uh, this is a picture from a training and we were uh, understanding the process of uh, preparing a shot, a clean shot. And this is an opportunity to talk about injection, uh, dosages, uh, risks uh, related to, uh, uh, to injection. What we are also uh, providing as training uh, topics is harm reduction principles, needle exchange and syringe in, in the needles programs and uh, management, overdose prevention, uh, uh, people who use drugs and uh, human rights, and we also provide uh, pr producing uh, brochures on, um, on uh, needle exchange programs or substitution treatment. We also organize campaigns, communication campaigns, we work with media, we work with international partners, and this is part of the video you just saw prepared uh, in, in collaboration and also with support of uh, HCLU and Peter and Istvan were uh, in Bucharest a year ago uh, in order to, to do this video. We also um, um, participate in talk shows as many, possible, uh, many times as possible um, and produce um, articles or help journalists in their uh, efforts to document the situation. And I must say that in the last years um, the media overall in Romania has in improved uh, its tone over this problem and uh, I would say they got to understand um, um, the complexity of, of the problem. They are no longer talk, talk just about junkies and about uh, the white death and stuff like that. They started to present a more humane portrait of, of poor populations affected by drug, drug use. And our most important part is uh, advocacy because 
we use research, training and communication in order to follow our agenda, which is, uh, as I said, humane drug policies for people who use drugs and vulnerable populations in general. So our first aim is to amend the law on drugs in the sense of decriminalization of possession for personal use because this is in itself um, uh, blocking the access to services for poor people. Uh, and also it, it, it affects the, the private lives of people who not, do not necessarily develop uh, problematic drug use. To reduce sentences for petty sellers because we have um, like a, our legislation is not very clear and um, a, a person who uses drugs and gets two dosages for, for him and a friend, for example, is seen, is seen by, the, by the law as a drug dealer and it's sent us to prison as a drug dealer, not as a person who uses drugs. And uh, also um, to promote alternatives to incarceration. Another part is um, sustainability of harm reduction services. As Fabiana said, uh, when uh, international donors leave the country, uh, and as long as the government is not taking over the, the financial uh, part of the projects, this, um, these interventions that we are operating will just uh, be left with, without any support and uh, forced to decrease their uh, area and range. Uh, we also advocate for, uh, for quality standards because this is the best way to, um, to assess the effectiveness be beyond epidemiology. We also promote access to services for underage drug users. According to the current legislation, if you are under 16 years old, or, or uh, in, in the case of uh, needles and syringes, you, you are not eligible for, uh, for the program. So, from the point of view of law, if a, an outreach worker provides syringes without parental consent, without asking the mother or the father of a, of a child aged 10 years, for example, who is injecting drugs, it's, it's sort of a very unclear uh, situation from the point of, the, of law. Um, okay. Harm reduction started in Romania in 2000. In 1999, there was a, a small uh, outreach project targeting sex workers. And with this uh, project, uh, the first contact with injecting drug users was made. And in 2000, uh, there was um, a first needle exchange um, um, center in, in Bucharest in a uh, psychiatric hospital. Um, so um, at that time, nobody believed uh, that there are so many users in Bucharest. Um, and um, even the people who were operating the, the service were skeptical about it, but uh, they just realized the, the scale of the phenomenon when like a month, ago, uh, a month later, from the first day of the beginning of the center, uh, they had like a hundred clients per day coming and getting syringes. Um, at that time, we, we introduced uh, an anonymous code because we were uh, concerned with pro protecting the uh, identity of our clients. And it's a simple code. That's, for example, it's my code. It's three letters from the first name of, the mo of my mother, year of birth, my three letters from the, my first name, month, and the gender. And we used this code to gather information about the age of, of, of the people who are accessing the services and also um, to gather information um, about the gender distribution. So from then, we know that about 25% of the clients accessing uh, programs are female, and the rest are male. And we, we had also uh, um, information about how many underage people we have in the system. Uh, at that time, police was uh, very reluctant in uh, accepting needle exchange programs or syringe and needles pro programs because uh, they just, just believed that it's a, it's a way to promote drug use and uh, that our mandate should be to, uh, to persuade people not to use drugs, to stop doing drugs because drugs are bad and uh, it's easy that, that, that you just realize that and next day you just stop using. Um, it wasn't the case. Um, so uh, our colleagues uh, in that time had a lot of trouble with, uh, with police officers who were just uh, parking their car next to the needle exchange program uh, waiting for people to get syringes and then uh, harass them and stuff like that. 
uh, even the clients were reluctant because they believed that we are undercover police officers who found a smart way to, to attract drug users and then to arrest them. Next, so that was the part when, it, when the program started to develop. At that time, there were a few uh, needle exchange programs were available in three cities, in Bucharest, Timisoara, and Constanza. And in Constanza, the program was operated by people who use drugs. In 2004, 2006, with global fund support, we managed to scale up the services and we, we reached up to 5,000 people uh, in two years. Um, we had protocols with the police and police finally uh, accepted the existence and effectiveness of, uh, of uh, needle exchange programs. Um, the focus uh, in that time, because we had access to funding, so we were quite safe for two years, was on quality, on what information we provide, on how we educate people, what are their rights, where, where should they, they go ask for help in case of uh, medical problems or social uh, situations. Uh, and it lasted until 2007 when the first part of the Global Fund project stopped and we, we were in, in the risk of, of, of stopping the, the services. In 2007, 2010, another round of the Global Fund, round six, allowed organizations to, to continue the services and also the United Nations, uh, UNODC program uh, allowed state institutions and one NGO to open uh, more opiate substitution centers. So uh, five new centers were opened by the National Anti-Drug Agency in this interval. Uh, two programs in prisons uh, providing substitution uh, to prisoners as well as uh, to uh, pilot needle uh, and syringe programs in prisons. Also an NGO with the Infectious Disease uh, Institute in Bucharest oh, um, uh, opened another uh, opiate center who is still working uh, uh, today. It was the best in, uh, part of our harm reduction history because in 2009 we reached about 9,000 people with 1.7 million syringes with a calculated rate of uh, 183 uh, syringes per client. And from 2009, the, ser the services continued to go down, even though uh, the distribution of syringes sometimes went up. But on a, on, on a general basis, um, we're uh, in a crisis right now, as we were last year when you guys came in Bucharest and we did this video. Uh, in 2008, approximately, uh, new substances uh, like synthetic drugs entered the market as, as it happened in here as well. First, they were used by people who were not uh, close to in, in injection, but um, in short time, uh, heroin users just discovered that these drugs were way better in terms of effect and cheaper and the best, I mean the best thing was that they were legal so they were no longer uh, <coughs> facing any, any issues with the police and all these conditions determined uh, an epidemic of synthetic injection in, in the communities of people who inject drugs in Bucharest and uh, just two years later we had uh, this increase in, in HIV. At that time we organized a conference on, uh, on opiate substitution treatment uh, in, uh, for the whole Balkan region and um, uh, for, the, um, sorry, 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 let's just, <laughs> just sorry, I have another line here uh, which is not on my presentation, I changed some things. So uh, at that time we also had six NGOs providing uh, needle and syringes while now we, we just have two. Uh, starting with 2010, uh, our services w went in, in a crisis because uh, the Global Fund, the main supporter of HIV prevention services for vulnerable populations, uh, canceled the program because Romania is a quite developed country and we, as you know, and it's, uh, it's no longer eligible under their uh, eligibility criteria for HIV. Um, so, um, UNODC also has uh, ended their project in 2011. Uh, the, the European Structural Funds allowed organizations to apply. Just one organization in the network managed to, to, to submit proposals that were approved, uh, and it, which include needle exchange, syringe programs, and OP substitution uh, treatment. And um, 
the cost was actually to turn uh, our colleagues in this project into bureaucrats because uh, the European structural funding in Romania is taking the, the Brussels bureaucracy, adding the Romanian bureaucracy, and passing all this bureaucracy to the people who are implementing the projects. So in fact, uh, instead of working with people, part of the teams were just doing papers on and on and recording personal information and data of their clients and sending them to the state because the state wanted so. In 2011, for the first time, the, the Infectious Diseases Institute, which is the national focal point uh, on HIV, uh, signaled an increase, a very high increase actually, compared to a year before, uh, 12 cases, and now 62 cases in September 2011. And that drew attention of international institutions as well, and uh, uh, World Health Organization, European uh, Disease, um, um, yeah, Center for Disease, for, uh, for Disease, and also the European Monitoring Center for Drug and Drug Addiction. They, uh, they came in Romania in 2000. I mean, actually, I'm not sure if they came in Romania because our our government did not ask for WHO to come. Uh, anyway, in 2011, uh, a common paper was published by ECDC and, EMC, uh, and EMCDDA uh, showing that Greece and Romania have major issues with uh, HIV among people who use drugs. Uh, our expectations were that the state was that the state will react immediately and uh, do something about it, but it was not the case. Um, there were signs of, of interest from the community, uh, the municipality of Bucharest. So the, the Bucharest City Hall contracted one organization in the network, uh, the Romanian Association Against AIDS, to provide uh, syringes to, uh, to drug users in Bucharest on, under the same condition to gather all the, uh, I mean, to gather the ID information because unfortunately in our country this is the only way because I imagine because of bureaucracy and corruption uh, it's the only way to double check if that syringe really uh, made it through to the beneficiary and it was not sold or something else by, by the professionals. So uh, actually uh, the aim of gathering personal ID information was not to see how many drug users we have and who are they but just to make sure the syringes uh, were uh, delivered as, uh, as planned. Uh, in 2012-2011, uh, drug users started mobilizing and started realizing that um, this is a difficult uh, situation and they have to at least say something about it because to do something about it, it was quite difficult. So on 1st December 2012, we had the first public statement from the community of people who use drugs done by, um, by a colleague who uh, unfortunately now is dead because of an overdose just a few months after this statement. Uh, in 2013, uh, we organized a protest. I will show you some, some images about it. Um, in 2012, 2013, we noticed like a general scale down of services, not necessarily in the NGO part, but also on the governmental side. Uh, if we had, like in 2007, 8, uh, 9, we had uh, effective needle exchange programs in, uh, in prisons, starting with 2012, they, they were cancelled. Not officially, because even now, if you ask the prison administration if they have needle exchange programs or singe and needles programs, uh, they will say, yes, they have. But the condition is that uh, the prisoners have to ask for the syringes. It's by demand. Uh, and there is a problem with keeping the confidentiality, the protecting the identity of the person. Uh, what happens is that if you're a prisoner and you ask for a syringe, the next night you will have the guards looking for drugs in your room. So nobody actually uh, asks for syringes. So from the point of view of the administration, we don't have any problem with drugs in prisons. So actually this is the, the consequence of this policy. Uh, up. <laughs> Sorry. 2008, we had 52 cases in prisons, and 2013, we have 321 cases in prisons. And um, ab about 250, something like that, it's people who use drugs out of these 300 people. But according to the prison administration, it's former drug users. It's very important. It's no longer like people who are currently using drugs. It's former. 
Uh, this, gra uh, this graph shows how the epidemic started developing. In blue, you have the syringe distribution, which was quite changing over the years. Um, on yellow, uh, you have uh, the emergency cases due to uh, synthetic cues, synthetic stimulants, and also synthetic cannabinoids. Um, so there was a peak in 2010, and then the government immediately, after public pressure, of course, criminalized 44 substances, and in, in 2011 they managed to find a legal uh, method to shut down the shops, which were quite, quite a lot in, in Romania, I must say. And then you have HIV in red. Um, from 2012 to 2013, it looks like it, it decreases a, a bit, but it's, it's, we're talking only about uh, new cases. The formula of the epidemic is novel psychoactive substances, mainly synthetic, I'm actually exclusively synthetic stimulants, with an increased number of injections per day per client, without uh, syringes, it results HIV. Because people, um, people were, were, were shutting, uh, shutting like three to five times per day, but when they turned to, to uh, NPS, they started using like 20 to 50 syringes in one period of time. So, and in, in, in conditions when it was absolutely impossible to uh, be aware of, of the risks because apparently on synthetic stimulants you're, you, you lose this skill. 2013, we organized a protest on 26th of, uh, of uh, June uh, as part of the Support so Don't Punish campaign, which is a global campaign which aims to, to draw attention on, uh, on, on people who use drugs and the, the negative effects of, of, uh, of the current uh, drug policy system, which is prohibition, we have to say. Uh, the, uh, the protest was organized in front of three ministries, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of the Interior, and the Ministry of Labor, and we asked for uh, services continuation, for removing the ID information from the records, and uh, for um, more comprehensive uh, uh, services for, uh, for people who use drugs. The protest gathered about six organizations in the network, professionals, and um, people who use drugs as well. Okay, this is what we are facing. Uh, oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the formula of the epidemic I told you about. And this is uh, the protest we organized. And uh, this is the current situation. We're, we're talking about cumulative cases. From 2008, we have, in 2014, 716 cases until September 2000, uh, 2014. So um, we are still waiting for, for the government to, to do something about it or to hope that we'll, international donors will come back in the country and will allow us to continue what we started. We're not alone. Uh, we are supported by people all over Europe. Um, that's part of a, of a message campaign organized like just a few months ago to show that uh, uh, international activists are on our side in our fight uh, for, for funding and for people's lives. This, uh, this, is, a, uh, this is a group of activists. Uh, in, in the happening we organized in 2013 in front of the Ministry of Health, and they say that stopping the needle exchange programs is the fastest HIV transmission route. That actually uh, was our point. We have the capacity, we have the know-how, we just need the funding to, to stop this epidemic. And even though it's, very, it's cheaper compared to any kind of other intervention, such as uh, antiretroviral treatment, still, apparently, there is no funding for it. Um, so the challenge is in controlling the epidemic. Uh, when, when money from the from state were available in small amounts, the biggest issue was to procure syringes. And our public procurement system forced us to get the cheapest offer. So the cheapest offer was procured. And the clients of the needle exchange programs rejected the syringes because of their very, very bad quality of the needle, first of all. Overall harm reduction scaled back following the closure of international projects. 
and decreased access to HIV testing and treatment for people uh, who inject drugs because uh, a year ago, if I'm not wrong, the access to treatment is no longer universal in Romania. You have to have papers, you have to pay your uh, medical insurance, otherwise you don't get, or not everybody gets uh, to, to, to receive the treatment, which is a pity because we had this very good practice for years and years, and it stopped right in the moment when people who inject drugs got affected by HIV. Oh. Uh, I will just uh, end with a few conclusions. Uh, the first conclusion is that harm reduction is developing constantly but very slowly in Romania and with some uh, ups and downs, but um, we, we, we are sure that we will continue and it's impossible to stop after so many years of successful interventions. The harm reduction uh, interventions in Romania are depending on international donors and the um, biggest challenge is to secure the funding from, uh, from national or local uh, budgets. It is cheaper to prevent than to treat. This is just a slogan. State authorities are prioritizing health problems depending on their scale and the type of affected population. Therefore, people who inject drugs, sex worker, Roma minorities or other vulnerable populations will always be by the end of the list not because they are, dif they are difficult or expensive problems, but because there are not so many. And the focus of the government is to, to cover bigger problems. And as our health system is not the best, we have a lot more other issues to take care of before uh, HIV, unfortunately. And we, we realized that, but it took us some years to understand this. HIV gets public attention because it scares people. That's why HIV does not have anything to do with that. And it will get more, uh, even more public attention because now in our, in, in our communities with, uh, with injecting drug users affected by HIV, TB is spreading. And the difference between TB and HIV is that you can get TB by air. So that will be another moment for our population to understand that if we do nothing now, it may be too late to, to, uh, to do anything in the future. State representatives invoke the economic crisis to excuse their lack of reaction. In fact, it's not the economic concern. It's the lack of political power of marginalized population. And this is where we have to, to react. Even though publicly, rec uh, publicly recognize the reality of HIV and its spread across various marginalized groups, the problem is overpassed by the health and social issues covering broader populations and also so social problems like unemployment, for example, which is like a bigger threat in, in the country. All right, so that was my presentation and... Kesenük a